Hello everyone! Hope you guys are all doing well and having a nice day today. My name is Kayla and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the life of Jean-Louis David and about a few of his works in detail. So without further ado, let's get started. Jean-Louis David was born in Paris on August 30th, 1748. His father was an iron merchant, but he died in a duel when David was only nine years old. His mother, Genevieve Brom, left him in the care of his uncles, those on her side of the family. The uncles and his mother wanted him to become an architect, but he rejected that and insisted that he should become a painter. Following the advice of painter Francois Boucher, a distant relative of his on his mother's side, he went under the tutorship of Joseph Marie Vienne. Through Vienne's lessons, David moved from the Rococo style of art and moved into classicism. While under Vienne's tutorship, he competed for the Prix de Rome, which was a scholarship for the French Art Academy in Rome, Italy. He tried four times until he won it with his piece Antiochus and Stratonis. He then went to Rome to the Villa Medici home of the French Academy where he studied the artworks of the Italian High Renaissance masters and Baroque art styles. When he came back to Paris, he completely gave up on the Rococo art style and fully adopted the idea of neoclassicism. Due to his starting popularity, the French Academy made him an associate of their school. He married Charlotte Picot, who was the daughter of Supervisor of Royal Buildings in 1782. Soon enough, he received sponsorship from his former master, Joseph Marie Vienne, and gained full membership to the Academy a year later. David went back to Rome to paint a commission for the Paris Salon of 1783, with the financial help of his father-in-law. The picture was supposed to be on Horatius defending his son before the people, but by his own judgment, he changed it to the Oath of Horati. It did exceptionally well at the Salon and won David even more popularity. When the French Revolution happened, David jumped into supporting it wholeheartedly. He started with the French Art Academy where he was a member. He led a group of dissidents made up of junior students at the school. He soon abolished the Academy by obtaining a decree from the Committee of Public Instruction in 1793. Since he was a friend and supporter of Maximilien Robespierre, he also voted for the beheading of the King and Queen of France. David was commissioned to paint the Oath in the Tennis Court, where revolutionaries swore not to disband until a written constitution was established for France, but the idea failed and it remained as a drawing. This was his first revolutionary act in artwork. David became Robespierre's Minister of the Arts, although this was an action only. He never formally received the title. He planned to design several things for the national pageants for the revolution to get more members. He also painted several revolutionary martyrs. Examples include Murat and Bra. Robespierre's power ended in July 1794, which led to David being accused as a tyrant of the arts. David found himself having to defend his name before Robespierre's enemies. Even though he vowed to go down with his friend, he ended up making excuses that he was not guilty. In the end, he was spared execution by guillotine and sent to prison for several months. When David was released from prison, he returned to painting classical history. He even rejoined the art academy he helped abolish when they returned under a new name. There he became a teacher and opened a studio that over time approximately 400 students attended in total. His life went back to normal, at least until he met Napoleon Bonaparte in the winter of 1797. When Bonaparte became the leader of France, he made David his first painter. David painted several pieces for Bonaparte that included his coronation, which David named Coronation, Napoleon in his study, and Napoleon at St. Bernard. Napoleon was abdicated from the country twice, the second being his defeat at Waterloo. Louis XVIII was then reinstated as king, and David was banished from France for swearing loyalty to Napoleon. At age 68, he settled in Brussels, Belgium, where he painted portraits and classical paintings of mythology. He died in 1825 of a heart problem. This concludes the life of Jean Louis David, so now let's talk about his works. Antiochus and Stratonis, as mentioned earlier, was a piece that made David win the Prix de Rome in 1774. The scene depicted is of Aristostratus diagnosing the incurable illness that Antiochus, son of the old king Seleucus of Syria, was afflicted with. As it turns out, the man is in love with his young stepmother, Stratonice, and once Aristostratus persuades his father to give the man his stepmother as a bride, he miraculously heals. Go figure. Belisarius, painted in 1781, was started in Rome and was finished when David was back in Paris. This was the piece that made the French Academy want to make him an associate. The scene in this painting is of Belisarius, who was a great military commander under the Roman Emperor Justinian. After being accused of plotting against Justinian, the Emperor ordered that his eyes would be taken from him. He was stripped of all his possessions and he became a beggar on the streets. The Oath of the Horati, also mentioned earlier, was commissioned for the Paris Salon of 1783. The story in this painting is a tale of two feuding cities, Roman Alba, who decided that they would end the dispute with a fight between two groups of three men each. The groups are the three Horati brothers and the three Horati brothers. The tragedy in the story is that a Horati sister and a Horati sister are married to a brother of the opposite family, and despite their pleas, the fight went on. The Death of Socrates was painted in 1787 for the Trudain de Montague brothers. 
The historical tale behind this painting is of Socrates' choice to die for the abstract idea that he believed in. Socrates was sentenced by the Athenian government to either die or go into exile because he was teaching something that they rejected. Socrates bravely chose to die for what he believed in rather than go into exile. The lictors bring to Brutus the bodies of his sons was painted in 1789. The story in this painting is of Brutus ordering his sons' deaths. After overthrowing the monarchy and establishing a republic in Rome, Brutus came to find out that his sons participated in a plot to re-establish the monarchy. Brutus had to act as judge, and he condemned his sons to death. The painting is of the aftermath of the execution of his sons. The guards brought the bodies back to be buried. The Sabine Women was painted in 1796-1799. through 1799. The story in this painting is of when Rome abducted the daughters of Sabine. The Sabines reacted by attacking Rome. Hercilia, a Sabine who is married to the leader of Rome, Romulus, stands between the two armies as she begs the two not to take the wives or mothers away from either side. Then other Sabine women join her in her pleading. The portrait of Monsieur Lavoisier and his wife was painted in 1788 for Antoine Lavoisier, a famous French chemist. In 1783, Lavoisier was the first man to determine what elements made up water. His wife took drawing lessons from David so that she could record her husband's experiments on paper. In Germaque Morning Hector was painted in 1783. This painting was offered to the French Academy by David's sponsor, his old tutor, Joseph Marivian. In this painting, it tells the story of Andromache's suffering at the loss of her husband, Hector, who was killed by Achilles. With Hector dead, Troy no longer has their key hero when we meet their demise. Andromache's face of pain is often compared by critics to Bernini's famous St. Teresa's face of faith. Here are my sources that I use in my research. I thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a great day.